Okay, Peggy, so thank you for doing this interview. We're now at the last day of the beautiful workshop initiation here in Belgium. We had a wonderful time. The group is growing in joy and in power and in enthusiasm for life. So would you like to introduce yourself a little bit so the viewer can know about your work? Well, first of all, I'd like to tell you that I'm, I just so appreciate this time here in your, your beautiful center and your wonderful family and the, the atmosphere you've created. It's been an amazing place to work and, and uh, to welcome people to the change they've been going through. I mean, my, my work, all of it, whether it's uh, initiation or training firewalk instructors or the weekend workshops that I do, uh, or the, the adventures, they all have one objective, and that is to uh, create human beings that are happier people because they're connected with their own destiny and with their spiritual self beyond their human self. And it's, true happiness comes from that, comes from that spiritual connection, that spiritual depth. So all of my work really uh, goes back to that, and it doesn't really matter in what arena we're doing it, whether people are getting trained to lead their own groups or whether they're coming for personal healing, it all has that, that base. So if you want me to introduce my work, that's it. Happiness through spiritual connection. Yeah, true. And if you look at the world today and the human condition today, um, what I experience from your work is that you bring forth a beautiful love for life, love for the spirit, love for creation, and you help assist people in growing into that love. Could you reflect on how this relates to the human condition at the, this moment in time? Well, you know, if you look back over time throughout, throughout history, and to some extent in our own lives too, we find our greatest growth comes after a time that we were challenged or squeezed. And I feel, I think that humanity is in that squeeze. And there's both for people who are tender-hearted and globally minded, there's uh, a great desperation when they look at what's in the world. But that intensity is feeding incredible creativity and change and movement in the direction we really want to see it go. Mm -hmm. And so I would say to the viewer, yes, feel the desperation, feel the discomfort, but don't let it discourage you. Let it feed your creativity, let it feed your enthusiasm, let it feed your love for humanity so that you take action uh, in, in what your heart dictates. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't see this time as the end times. I see it as uh, maybe the birth canal, mm -hmm. um, where, where we are challenged to fight for a new reality. Mm -hmm. uh, we are challenged to grow ourselves, we're challenged to reach beyond our own uh, uh, selfish or egotistical involvement and say, whoa, what can, what can I do here? Uh, yeah, but w what comes forth in your teaching is that you inspire people to really create a change in their own lives and of their families and, and the bigger whole. So oh, ab absolutely. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying mm -hmm. absolutely the opposite. Mm -hmm. Let any time you look at the world and are dissatisfied with it, feed, feed the change. And the change has to first come within ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, within ourselves, our own small environment. And you can't go and save the world if your own family is stumbling in, in the, uh, rebellion or discomfort or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, we need to take care of home first and then the bigger home. Yeah. So, 
definitely my, my work is definitely about uh, with an honest view at our own limitations, our own fears, our own uh, you know, trembling hearts, that we, we don't ignore that. We, we look deeply into our own uh, pain from the past uh, and, and, then, and then we move forward into the joyful future. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I just don't believe in dragging it along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you like to see happen coming from your own experience of connecting deeper and deeper and deeper with the heart of the world? What would you like to see happen around you, but also on a global scale? The, 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 a, it's, a, it's a complicated question, mm -hmm. because I think what is going to happen is way beyond my current capacity to see it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've named my company Sundor. Okay, it's, it's in, in uh, Eskimo religion, they say that the shaman goes through seven doors, the last one flies through the sun door into ever-awakened consciousness. Okay, I didn't name my company ever-awakened consciousness, I named it sun door. My job is to move people through the door, to hold that door open for people to move through, um, not to be in that other place yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so my job is to bring people to consciousness, awareness, uh, a sense of capacity, a sense of excitement about life, a sense of possibility instead of desperation, um, the, that joyful base of living. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the Creator's job to inspire those opened hearts and opened minds to know the steps to take uh, to bring us to that next evolutionary step. Mm -hmm. And I am excited, I'm thrilled to be alive right now, I'm uh, delighted with what people are doing. There are so many amazing, creative, capable minds who are all, due to the pressure putting differences aside and coming together to create change. And, and so I think what's going to happen is way beyond what any of us can conceive of at, at present. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all just sort of trying to paint our little, our little corner. And when the, when the painting's actually finished, it's going to be magnificent. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I want to see happen, I don't think uh, is important at all. You know, my job is to uh, help create as many inspired and motivated and happy and capable people as possible. Mm -hmm. I would like to hear you talk a bit about the, your work is very body based. Yes. So I would like to hear you explain a little bit about it. But your work is also very heart centered. Mm -hmm. So how these two paths join together to help people to manifest their dreams. Because that's a clear focus, especially in initiation, the mm -hmm. workshop we're doing now, mm -hmm. is to find the, the tools within ourselves to manifest the dreams that live within us. So could you talk about this body-based approach and the heart-centeredness? Absolutely. Um, we, science has shown us that our uh, patterns, our, our personality patterns, our experiences are locked in our bodies. Um, that when we are wanting to move forward, let's say, into a new project. Um, it will be the memories that are held in our bodies 
that surface and uh, uh, stop us. And so the, the uh, base of creating bodies that know they can overcome challenges, that they can do uh, what other people consider miraculous, um, creates a base for people to check in with and then their body goes, ah, you can do this. Huh? So that's, that's why my, um, my work is so body-based. It's, it's to create a physical reality that says change is possible, that, change, that says what my mind considers miracles are possible, what my mind says uh, might be un unovercomable barriers are transcendable, that, that, that this knowledge is held in the body. You know, as we talked about, you know, the Buddhists say that uh, it's of great benefit to have a body, a physical body, mm -hmm. because we can stabilize our experience in that body. And science is now verifying that, that our, our experiences um, actually change our bodies. And that these, these uh, when we go back and check our memories, if we have changed the basic reality of our bodies, we then change how we move through life. Uh, so, so these, these body-based activities that we do uh, here, uh, and I just want to tell the, the, anyone who might be listening to this that if, there, if there's never a forcing here, that if people choose not to do any of these things, for example, the fire walk that I'm so well known for, that it is unimportant that being in the presence of other people doing it the body starts recreating its memories. Mm -hmm. So it's not important for people to do it. Mm -hmm. um, for example, people in wheelchairs can observe fire walking and their bodies go through the same changes. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, but having a body that has experienced these uh, activities, maybe we call them, the, mm -hmm. the, that we do during these trainings, um, creates a, a, a base that we go back to that tells us that uh, change is possible, that, mm -hmm. that uh, movement is possible. Um, so that's, that's, the, that's the body part. But what's going to guide the, the, the change? What has to guide the change is the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've lived as the human race too long from, from the patterns, you know, patterns of, of need, patterns of, of uh, uh, not enough, patterns of, uh, of greed, um, uh, patterns of selfishness. Uh, those need to be dissipated. They need to be eliminated. We need, as, as humanity, to start living from our heart. Mm -hmm. The heart is a tender, tender thing. And so that, that heart needs to be cultured. It needs to be cultured and it needs to know that it's safe. And that's done through spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I bring spiritual practice into uh, my work, is mm -hmm. because that it's in spiritual practice that we allow the heart to become tender and the heart to be carried forefront uh, mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, what I see during the, the workshop that we did, if, if people start Re it's not that if they start checking in with their heart, the heart just seems to come forward during your word. It's like they, it comes forth through all participants. And what strikes me again and again is that um, the reality of the heart is so similar in every human being. It is the same quality mm -hmm. and often or maybe all the time, people, when the heart comes forth, they can really relate to everything, not only each other, but also to their past, their future, and all of creation around us. Um, so what you just told is that all these things that stand in the way of that, uh, the selfishness and all these things, they need to be dissipated. But for the viewer who is, or, or the listener who is listening now, they might feel in a, 
a heavy place right now in their life, what would be a good advice for them in how to start losing or loosening these uh, knots of negativity or limitation? If I was going to give a prescription for humanity as a whole, so not mm -hmm. knowing the individual or what's going on, I would say spend time in nature. Uh, God's creation in the natural environment is untouched. It's, it's in perfect harmony. It's like feng shui by the feng shui master of all times. Everything is in perfect harmony. And you, you, can, you can look at it even. You can take a frame like that and it'll be in perfect harmony. And then shrink that down to the smallest bit. And even in the smallest bit of nature, there's absolute perfect harmony. Our bodies relate to that harmony. And when we're in nature, uh, we start feeling the, the Creator's heart heartbeat. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if I just had to, if there's only one prescription I could give to someone who's feeling heavy hearted right now is spend time in nature and, and know that the, uh, the rhythm of life changes. That, that there are times we have to gather uh, some big rocks to put on the bottom of our boat mm -hmm. so that our boat is stable enough to sail into the future. Mm -hmm. And those big rocks, when we're gathering them, might feel heavy, but to know that, that they serve a purpose in the future and mm -hmm. to not despair that, that it's too heavy, just to, to, to give it time, spend time in nature, and allow the future to unravel, that in the long run, those rocks will be a gift. Mm -hmm. And is there something that people could do to connect more with their own inner guidance, to create a vision or to find the vision for their lives? Well, I would recommend while in nature to, to look at, well, th that question we asked this morning is, is such a good one, you mm -hmm. know. If, if God gave you the ability to change something about the world, what would you change? Mm -hmm. uh, because that, that brings it down. You suddenly have an all-powerful uh, tool for change. What would you change? Mm -hmm. And to look at that as sort of a directive for your vision, mm -hmm. that that has been a guiding a guiding point for my life. Mm -hmm. uh, if I could change one thing, what would I change? And that's been that's created my whole life. Mm -hmm. But the question is directed to the bigger whole. It's it's not or to the the world. What, what would you change in the world? Or it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. Uh, in initiation, of course, we do it that way. Initiation, we we say, uh, uh, what would you change in the world? But you can't look outside until you've healed inside. Mm -hmm. And so, for some people, what they w would change is very personal, mm -hmm. and that's where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, most people in initiation have done quite a bit of healing work. Mm -hmm. Can you give an example, like when it, it's needed to be more personal, more reflecting? on the inside. Could you give like an example? Uh, yeah, quiet the mind, uh, take up meditation practices, eat more healthy, take mm -hmm. walks every day. It can be so many millions of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when, when that question is answered, how, you know, what would I do if God gave me this ability to change something about the world or change something, period, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would spend more time with my child or I would uh, see if there are orphans that need support, and that because that's really where I where where my uh, where I'm wanting to put my love, or I want to make sure that animal cruelty is stopped. And there can it can be external things like that, or it can be internal. Mm -hmm. But that that question is such a good guiding point as far as looking at directives. Mm -hmm. And when these directives come up. 
from your own heart. Some people find it hard to find the fuel to go that direction. There might be fears, limiting patterns, um, or just the feeling that there's no energy for it. What, what is you, your viewpoint on that? Come to initiation. <laughs> really the truth you need you need to have a base of someone who knows how to feed mm -hmm. uh, I have been trained how to feed since I was a teenager I started working with Swami Keshava Das was teacher from India with Native Americans I've been trained to do this mm -hmm. that's what I do mm -hmm. and and the truth is I would not be who I am today if I had not thrown myself at capable leaders. Mm -hmm. I mean, I sought out capable leaders. Mm -hmm. I went looking for them, you know. Who has what I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. you know, who, who has it? And I found them. And so, if there's anyone who's out there who's desiring a better life, and they're not doing something about it, they're not looking for other people who can help them do it, they deserve to be on that hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. There are ways off the hamster wheel, mm -hmm. and we have to be willing to find them. Yeah. And uh, I've been trained to do this. That's why I do it. Mm -hmm. I've had the I've had the best teachers mm -hmm. uh, train me to do it, and that's why people move the way they do in this one week mm -hmm. is because I've been turned into that sun door to usher people through. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. By, uh, by very incredibly good teachers mm -hmm. who, who taught me to do it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, is there some... Let me uh, think of the words. During this week you gave us a lot of questions to live with. Like the one, what what would you change if God gave you the ability mm -hmm. to change mm -hmm. something? What would be a good guiding question for people to nourish their own hearts, fuel themselves, and find that new chapter they're longing for? There's, there's two things. Okay. Okay. So one of them is that most people live without goals. Mm -hmm. True. Um, and so that would be the first thing. The first thing would be know what it is that you want. Mm -hmm. Just know what it is that you want. And what it comes up, of course, is uh, what if I don't get it? Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't get it, you're no worse off than you would be if you didn't have the goal. Mm -hmm. So number one is know what it is that you want and that doesn't have to be a big thing i would suggest starting small in the morning when you get up say to yourself how do i want to feel by the end of the day yes just that very simple thing how do i want to feel by the end of the day and the next thing is visualize it being so mm -hmm. uh, if what you want to feel is full of energy and delight see yourself in the evening coming home from work going whoa, this stuff works, huh? mm -hmm. that you're full of, full of energy, uh, full of delight. Then, that evening, we call it gathering the pearls, mm -hmm. that evening, uh, think through the day and gather the good things that have happened. Most people at night, they lie there and they think about everything horrible that's gone on. Mm -hmm. What happens is they program their subconscious to repeat that mm -hmm. and multiply that. If as they're going to sleep, people think about all the good things, even if it's just a little thing, having noticed a rainbow, uh, or that butterfly that flew by, uh, or the smile on their child's face, you know, it doesn't have to be these big things. Little pearls come together to make a beautiful necklace. Mm -hmm. And so, to gather those pearls in the evening before falling asleep, and th those pearls will multiply, and within two weeks, of doing that, of gathering pearls, people will start feeling a change. Their life will start becoming more joyous and more fulfilling. 
That's a beautiful one. Thank you for sharing this. Um, there's one more thing I, I would like to say, is that in the beginning of the week you told people are meant to choose and yet you, you just talk that most people don't really have goals. Um, what inspires you as a person to light that fire in the hearts of, of people? Well, uh, I had an enlightenment experience when I was 12. Started working with Swami Keshav Das at 15. And what happens when your heart gets tender through this work is you start feeling the pain of the world. Mm -hmm. And that was my primary motivator, um, was the desire to make people happy, help people become more joyful. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Swami Keshwadas, when I was 17, he, he told me two things. One of them was he said, your destiny is to be a spiritual teacher. Uh, which was uh, a great vision for me because at the time I was too shy to talk in public and mm -hmm. so I really had to work through work through that one. Mm -hmm. But uh, the other thing is he told me is he, he grabbed my arm and he says, you make me happy. Uh -huh. He said, when I'm around you, I get happy. Mm -hmm. And that was a, such a good indicator that that, that is what happens in my presence that you know happiness happens and and uh, that is what I have continued to to feed and learn mm -hmm. how to do mm -hmm. uh, how to help human beings find that connection that it feeds their joy about living mm -hmm. uh, so that they can feed it into their families mm -hmm. and into into the world mm -hmm. uh, that's that's my primary spark. Yes.